So, this is the third in the series of blood pressure videos. Um, this particular one, I just want to look at IV fluids, since that's the first usually line of intervention um, that we use to increase the preload and therefore the um, increase of the stroke volume and um, toning the blood pressure as such. Um, so let's have a look here at just the different fluid compartments uh, in the body. So there is um, an intracellular fluid. That's an average uh, 23 liters worth of, of water in there. And then we have two compartments of the extracellular fluid. So about 11 and a half liter fluid in between tissues called the interstitial, interstitial fluids. And about eight and a half liter is exchangeable of that. Three liter um, will always remain. And then of course we have the fluid in the blood. So the blood volume is about five liters, but only three liters of that is plasma, and two liters is cells, mostly red blood cells. Okay, so what happens if we start infusing, for example, a liter of normal saline, or a liter of Hardman's, or even plasma light? All right, so I zoom out a little bit. Only a certain amount of that liter will actually go and remain intravascularly. So for normal saline, that's about 200 mils, but for plasma light and Hartman's, that's somewhere between 80 and 200 mils. And the reason being is that normal saline only distributes itself over the intravascular compartment and the interstitial compartment, meaning that 200 mils go intravascularly, but about 800 mils go into the interstitial area. So therefore we see we're so afraid of overloading with fluid because it may cause oedema. So particularly intraoperatively, um, the old, some of the older days, um, uh, longer surgeries people would have five or six liters or more of um, crystalloid being infused and uh, people were left with edema um, for example in the splanchnic area in the gut um, making him sort of not really feeling normal in the in the stomach but giddy didn't feel like eating and their recovery was really slowed down by it so um, we've also seen previously with the Starling curve, we do not want to overload uh, the preload because eventually the heart might um, start decompensating and I even cause heart failure. So, just to remember, yes, from the sodium, 200 intravascularly and other 800 mils will go into the tissues with Hartman's or compound sodium lactate and plasma light, it's a bit different. It's between 80 to 200 going intravascularly, um, um, most of it going into interstitial, and meh, a certain amount will also go intracellularly. Um, so, very, very interesting to see that we're actually giving a liter about a majority, 80% or more um, doesn't stay in the blood circulation but goes particularly in the interstitial compartment and some may even go intracellularly. So someone asked me how is that done for things like Jello Fusion and Albimax. So Albimax um, comes in two forms, usually the 4 or the 20 to 4 as a 500 mils and the 20 is 100 mils. And Albumax is so called like a uh, expander. And what it does is it actually takes fluid from the interstitial area and shunts it into the intravascular area. Uh, a similar effect is known for jello fusing, which comes in a 500 ml bag. And we know is five, that 500 ml bag of jello fusing, we see an expansion of about 650 to 850 ml of fluid coming from the interstitial area and shunting into the vascular space. So, all in all, um, 
it's a pretty difficult equation to see um, and predict what actually will happen um, when we give IV fluids and where that fluid will end up.